right, day 21. Welcome back to the Windows and Mirrors podcast. My name is John. And I'm Keith. And remember, this is a podcast where we're trying to show you that the Bible is more like a window than it is a mirror. We come to it to look through it and see God. We don't come to it primarily to look at it and see ourselves. All right, Exodus 29 to 32. Mm. Uh, we're almost done with the end of the book. Wow. Two more days and we're done. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so 29, man, um, jumping right in, we left off talking about the priest last time. And uh, if you remember, the garments that they had on was given a lot of weight and time. Right. Um, and one of the things I did mention is that they had these 12 stones right. uh, on their garments um, as they went before the Lord. Yeah. And it was them representing the people of God before God himself right. to atone for their sins. So you see God is making a way for his people to come and worship him through sacrifice and that kind of stuff. But what's dope here, bro, is that they were to be consecrated. And all that means is this. They were to be set apart for special use. Right. That's all it means. Right. The priest was the only cats was to come in there. Right. Yeah. And then the high priest was to come in the most holy place. Otherwise, it was a wrap. Right. Yep. It was a problem if you came in that thing <laughs> right, right. unauthorized. You know what I'm saying? So um, the priest was the only ones to come in. And again, we see over and over and over that God is saying like, no, no, no. The reason I'm saying all this, the reason I have all of these uh, uh, stipulations about the tabernacle and the priest is because I want to dwell with y'all. Right. And I'm a holy God. So I can't be approached in any kind of way. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so, so that, so what comes back again, right, right. at the end of 29, so that God would dwell with us. And that's important to know, right? These are not a list of arbitrary rules, right? right. God is not a referee. Yeah. A referee sits there, <laughs> calls a game. These are my rules. I enforce these rules. Yep. Make sure y'all do things right. Mm -hmm. And then after the end of the day, the ref goes home and you go home. Y'all yeah. don't go out and grab mm -hmm. drinks, grab mm -hmm. dinner. The ref leaves and goes his way. God is not a referee just here to make sure that you keep these rules. God's saying, no, 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 listen, I want y'all to dwell with me. And they're, right, and we're going to talk about this in Leviticus, but as God shows all of this stuff, what God is saying is, no, no, look, I want you to come and dwell with me, and there is a way for you to get back to me. Mm -hmm. And so me actually telling you the way that you get back to me is an act of grace and mercy and kindness, it's this open invitation from God to us. And that's why we can't lose the so what, right? Mm -hmm. The purpose of why all of this takes place mm -hmm. gives us eyes to see and understand the importance of the part in our Bible that mm -hmm. honestly we get to when kind of our eyes start to glaze over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Super dope. Um, yeah, in uh, 30, <clears throat> he's going to talk about this ransom price that needs to be paid so the tabernacle can be built from both the wealth and the poor, right? right. So there was, it was this price that they had to pay and it was to make, um, so that they can make atonement and all these things. But it just sheds light on what Christ will say, like, yo, I came to give my life as a ransom for many. Right. And here it's crazy that the poor and the wealthy have to pay the same price. Right, right, So right. you see that at the end of the day, like regardless of any type of earthly social status, mm. it's the same price right. to enter God's kingdom, right? Yeah. That nobody comes in in any other way than right. through the blood, the precious blood of Christ. That's good. Nobody can buy their way, way into the kingdom, right? And nobody is disqualified uh, by any type of socioeconomic status. Yeah. So that's that's super dope um, for 30. Yeah. Um, and then 31. Yep. Bro. So it's so dope because Come again, on. God is in these details, right. bro. And he is not just appointing anybody to build his place. Right. But these cats, Bezalel and Aholiab. <laughs> They nice. They nice with it. They nice. <laughs> so God says, yo, they got the spirit of wisdom. Yeah. Right? They got the spirit of wisdom in their hearts, and God is going to use them to build his tabernacle. Why is this important? Because at the beginning of creation, God built the world with the spirit of God. Mm. Right? The spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters and separated the waters, right? And, and, and God right. created the world. But it also says in Proverbs that what? God founded the world by wisdom. Yep. So you see that God is using the same means here that mm. he did in creation. Mm. Again, creation and redemption have the same goal. Right. God dwelling with his people. That's good. He's trying to link all this stuff together. Now, it's not just that too. <laughs> Another thing is that um, if you remember in Genesis 1, God said, let there be light. God said, let there right. be light. Right? God said, God said, 
seven times in Exodus 25 to 31. Mm, come on. It's going to say God said. Right. Because he's trying to link us back to creation with the goal of creation traditions to, so that God can do it with his people. Not done. Here we go. At the end of this text, you saw it too, J. I saw it. Like, I was about to go. go ahead, bro. Go ahead. God commands them to rest. Yes, bro. sir. At the end of the text, I saw it in your eyes, yeah. bro. God commands them to rest. Yes. And once again, as he does it, rest is this resistance. It's this. Yes, I love that It word. is a resistance to the notion yes. that we are the ones that keep ourselves alive mm. by our own hard work. Yeah. And at the end of this beautiful act of creation, yeah. they're drawn into this rest. The first time... God created and he rested by himself. This time, they're drawn into this act of mm. creation and they get a chance to join in with God in that rest. Yes. Super yeah. dope how that yeah. just parallels yeah. creation. <laughs> again, God is going to rerun the same thing. The same storyline. Over, over and over again because he wants to beat it into our heads. Right. Uh, super dope, man, how you said that. 32, though. <laughs> oh, every time we get a high point, <laughs> something wild happens. Yeah. So... And this is so good, too, because 32 to 34 is going to be like a parenthesis. Right, right, right. To the tabernacle. Yeah. And um, just to tip my hand a little bit, God is showing that, no, 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 no. Even in the midst of this sin, this the tabernacle is going to be the way that people can still, sinful people can still come into my presence, which is going to set us up for Leviticus. Yeah. Right. Um, but if here, anybody but, is going to wonder why do we need this to come around with us, yep. the sinfulness of the people is going to show, show the it. utility and the wisdom and the foresight of God. Now, I set this up in advance because I know y'all. Yeah. And I already know that things are going to go south. Bro, 40, if 40 days ago right. you had crossed the Red Sea, you would still probably be hyped. You right. would still probably be on a high. 40 days after they crossed the Red Sea. Right. They worshiping idols. Right. Right? Moses is up in the mountain. They like, man, this dude is taking too long. Aaron, what's up? Hey. <laughs> throw that thing in the fire. <laughs> we need some gods, man. <laughs> right. So they throw this stuff in the fire and they make this golden calf. Yeah. And they begin to worship it. And they begin to ascribe to the golden calf that the things they should ascribe to God. And this is the, right? This is why. Yeah. Like, what they do is it, it, it says that they throw this um, festival to Yahweh. Mm. And so what you have is them taking aspects of the golden calf and ascribing uh, it to God, right? Yeah, like what, what they'll say is like, yo, look, these are your gods that brought you out of Egypt. Yeah. And here's the problem with making graven images. Mm. It's not in what it says about God. Mm. It's what it leaves off. Mm, that's good. A calf is strong. Yeah, yeah. A cow and an ox is strong. Mm, mm. God is strong. Mm. The problem is God is more than strong. That's good. That that's all it is. It's limiting. So mm. it doesn't help us understand God's glory. Mm. It dims us to all of who God is, yeah. right? God is spirit and the epitome of perfection. Absolutely. He can't be captured mm -hmm. in an image fashioned by human hands. Yeah. It's yeah. so much irony in this text. Right. And we don't have time to get into all of it. But one of the things I was struck by was that who was leading this joint? Yeah. Aaron. Aaron. He's a priest. We just talked about the holiness of the priest. Yeah. And this dude is leading this. And the thing I just thought about, idolatry is not a respecter of persons, bro. No. It don't care who you are. It don't care about your ministry, your, pap, your platform, your public title, right. right? Sin is coming for you and it's crouching at the door. And we are tempted to idolatry day after day after right. day. And I don't care how holy you are. You need to be on guard, bro. One of the things that I thought of, in spe especially in light of where we are right now, yep. I think culturally mm -hmm. where so many people who have been so gifted and mm -hmm. eloquent and at the forefront yeah. have turned their back on the Lord and caused folks mm -hmm. uh, faith to shake. Mm -hmm. You remember when God gave Moses the word, Moses was insecure. And he said, yo, God, I need a mouthpiece. Yeah. God brings Aaron. 
Aaron, and he serves as the mouthpiece to relay this information. So we have to know or think Mm. in the eyes of the people, it's not just by chance that they brought him in. He had been a mouthpiece. And they're like, yo, we saw your zeal and were encouraged by it. And we learned so much. And it's knowing like, yo, yo. Even when God's mouthpieces fail, it doesn't delegitimize the God that used them to speak. Amen. Right. And so I just think that's particularly yeah. necessary, it's, it's, especially at a time where we're seeing so many of God's mouthpieces. Yeah. Fail. Yeah, absolutely, man. That is that is an excellent application. Um, in this text, the Lord is going to burn with anger. Wow. Yeah. Because they've worshiped idols right <laughs> like it's super plain in the text moses comes down the mountain he breaks the tablets to show that they've break they've broken the commandments right right they've broken the first two commandments and right. to break the first two commandments is to break all of them right, right. these are the chief commands I mean, it's like man i just got down here i just got down here <laughs> broke the joints <laughs> yeah. right? right and what you're going to see though and this blew me away mm. is that moses is going to act like a christ-like figure he is the mediator. He yeah. is the one who stands between the people and God. Mm. He's like, God, yo, yo, don't do it. I, I yep. know they wild. <laughs> but for, remember your covenant. Remember your promises that right. you swore by yourself. Mm. Right? Fulfill that. Like, you have to fulfill those promises. Right? Remember the fame in your name. All these yep. things. And so what does Moses do? Key. He goes down. Yeah. Jesus was sent down into earth. Yeah. And then Moses goes back up. Right. He says, yo, I'm going to go back up and hopefully the Lord will forgive and atone for your sins. Yeah. So just like the Lord Jesus goes down, resurrects mm. and sins back to the Father. Moses, That's good, Moses bro. Moses is going to come down, holler at the folks like Jesus did right. to us. And then he's going to have to go back. And listen, this is so key. And, and I don't mm. want to go too far into this. But he says, yo, he specifically says, I have to go up. Right. In order to atone for your sins. Why mm. is that important? The book of Hebrews is sharp. Come on. The book on. of Hebrews is going to say, yo, the reason Christ's work works right now for you right. is because he rose from the grave right because he went back to the father why right. because his sacrifice mm. his dying on the cross is ever present in the presence of god to say look i am here i am a priest who cannot die mm. i died for them and mm. i'm always in your presence to represent them right before you that's why the resurrection is so important yeah right because he's that priest that that, that crucified priest who stands in the presence of god to atone for our sins yeah yeah that Moses, like Christ, as he comes down, Moses, he so closely identifies with his people yes. that he's willing to be cut off yep, from was... God's favor yes. on their behalf yes. if God won't take them back. Yes. So what God says is, yo, Moses, yo, I'm I'm just going to start over with you. Yeah, I'll start over, bro. And he's like, nah, God, look. My fate is their fate. Let their fate be my fate. Mm. I want to identify with them so much, Lord, Mm. that if you would have me back, I want to bring them with me. Amen. Jesus comes down and says, no, no, no. Right. God, I so closely want to identify with them. And granted, he's not at odds with God. And we can get into that more about how this is not like, Jesus and God go, go, going oh, yeah. back and forth like they're not yeah. on the same page. But what Christ mm-hmm. do, does and shows is, no, I so closely want to identify with these people. Um, Richard Sibbs will say it like this. Um, if Christ won't be merciful to our weaknesses, then he won't have a people to worship him. Mm. Right. That's and so true. it's just a reminder, one, of the mediator but two the grace and compassion of god to willingly receive them back so yeah. anybody that looks at the old testament says old testament is a wrathful god he's full of wrath no over and over and over we're seeing god's quickness to mm. forgive sin and to restore his broken people yeah i think uh one of the statements that always keeps me bro is man god was kind to save any when you realize he's obligated to save none. Mm. And it's like, yo, for God, for them to still be around. Amen. <laughs> and for us to, so that we could be around. Amen. God is good. Amen. Because God is kind. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Yeah. Father, we uh, thank you for your kindness and mercy, uh, even in the midst of idolatry. God, we pray that we would keep our hearts from idols, that we wouldn't let our influence, uh, whatever, how, how, however much of it we may have, uh, influence us to uh, not worship you, Lord. Uh, we 
pray that we would stay committed to you and what you've done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.